Hello everyone, in this video I'm going to be giving you an overview of my brand new Beetleweight Combat Robot, which is Anxiety Attack. Anxiety Attack is a really evil overhead bar spinner that will be competing next weekend, so I wanted to get this video out of the way before this gets completely destroyed. I'm still putting on the finishing touches, so this isn't the final, final version of it, but I at least wanted to make a video before the competition. So let's dive right in and see what Anxiety Attack is all about. Before I do the top-down overhead shot and kind of open this up and show you all the guts and everything, I wanted to kind of give just a brief overview of what this is all about. So this is a three-pound U.S. beetle weight, and up top we have an overhead spinning bar design. This is kind of, um, I'm trying to remake Kamikaze. Kamikaze was my other three pound that was kind of just built just to see how crazy I could get with a weapon. And this is kind of a rebuild of that. I want to kind of start from scratch and try and make that design work. So that's kind of where the inspiration for this came. So it uses an overhead bar that is really, really big. This is 12 and a half inches from tip to tip. Um, I have these nice little impactors on here. This is hardened S7. So I don't think I'm going to have any issues with that. I'll go into kind of the mounting and everything on that later. I am using full brushless. There is um, not a brushed motor in here. I have brushless drive on the back, belt driven to the wheels on the front. And if you've ever seen um, on my Facebook page, I've done some kind of teasing about this. Inside of here, I have a 900 watt motor and I'm running 4S. So I've got the battery on one side, the battery on the other side. So fully brushless drive, 4S um, system, and I can peak this weapon at about 60 amps. So um, I've pushed, I think 890 is the most I've ever recorded on this weapon. And so that means when this weapon is up to speed based on just the sheer length of it, the weapon bar itself weighs about one pound, but at full speed, if this gets up to full speed, I'm looking at about two kilojoules. And the spin up time is actually pretty good. It's under five seconds. I wanna say it's like three and a half, four seconds for full spin up time. So it is a bit of a beast when this thing gets up and spinning. The biggest issue I'm having right now is stability. This thing doesn't necessarily lay flat, mostly because of the 3D printed chassis. It's really hard to get it perfectly flat. So it kind of wants to flip all over the place. So that's the issue I'm having with it. And last thing is the wedge on the front is an eight inch aluminum wedge. This is originally intended to be titanium or some other material. One, I didn't have that much extra weight for it. And two, I didn't have that much extra time. Normally I would water jet something like this, but I ended up just taking a piece of aluminum out of my stock and just machining it for this version. So this front wedge might end up being um, titanium or like AR400 or something instead. But that is the overview. Let's bring this over to the workbench and do kind of a top down and disassemble it and show you what's inside. And here is a close up version of Anxiety Attack. The first thing that I want to point out is the wedge isn't being properly held on right now. I just kind of have it tacked on. This chassis has gone through many, many revisions and this particular chassis doesn't work with this wedge. I have another one printing right now. So this is just kind of a test platform. Also in this video, I'm going to be saying chassis a lot and I'm gonna be saying it like chassis. See, here in the US, we have different pronunciations than other countries. So you might wanna get over the fact that it's pronounced differently throughout the world. Every single video where I say chassis, someone points out that it's pronounced different and that's how it's pronounced here. So. Moving on, um, let's start by taking off the weapon and then taking off this top plate. This isn't the easiest design to maintain and service because the weapon needs to come off before anything else comes off. So if you look here in the bottom, I have this machined aluminum plate that holds the motor in place. And I only have two of the four screws in it right now, just for various reasons. And then you can see a nut right here. This is a um, metal lock nut, not a nylon lock nut, but a metal lock nut. And that is what holds basically what I'm calling the draw bar in place. So this is a shoulder bolt that goes through the entirety of it and replaces the actual shaft on the motor. So this actually acts as the shaft for the motor. So to take off the weapon, all I need to do is undo this bolt and then the whole thing comes off. And of course, because I have a custom tool for this, because the clearance on this is so small, I had to make this custom socket to fit inside this recess. 
If it's worth doing, it's worth overdoing, right? So now that that nut is off, we can simply pull up this whole thing. And there you go, so weapon comes off. Uh, I have a little spacer in there. The motor can comes off. And let me get that spacer out. So there we go. So quick look at the weapon itself. Let me move this away. Here's the weapon, 12 and a half inches of lovely S7 goodness. And then on the other side, I have this nice little piece of aluminum. So this is the interface for the weapon motor. So you see that the housing, it's all kind of separated here. This just sits inside, snaps into those grooves like that. So it's nice and keyed in. So the force is not going on, well, it's going on these screws, of course, um, but is going on the actual frame of the motor. And then this whole thing just holds the assembly together. So that is kind of how the weapon attachment is. And if we look inside here, you can see that the motor is just right inside. So pretty cool. And then this whole thing just drops down on top of it. So the next thing we need to do is undo all these screws and then the whole top plate will come off. I decided to keep all of these screws Phillips screws so I can use the same driver to take the whole top off since just charging the batteries, you need to remove the whole top. So unfortunately, it's kind of one of those trade-offs. It's not the best design decision. I could have had a you know, battery access somewhere else, but as you will see in a second, that is pretty difficult with how tight everything is inside of here. So here is the inside to anxiety attack. And this is maybe kind of one of the reasons for the name. There's a lot going on in here. So let me just kind of break it down. So starting from the front back, um, as I said, this is just a prototype. So all the holes aren't in here. These are all press fit um, brass inserts. Um, these are heat set. So you actually put a soldering iron tip in them and then just kind of shove them in and they melt inside. I did some tests with my Arbor Press and found that in the Nylon X, when these are pressed in there and I tried to press them out, it would literally pull all the infill and everything out with it and just completely destroy everything. So these hold in really tight and there'll be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven across the face of it. And when this is on, there is a bit of a gap here. This is just kind of open. And I did that because putting an insert here in the middle would have been very difficult and it could have possibly compromised the relatively thin top plate. So I didn't do that. Up front, we've got the ESC. This was kind of a pain to fit in here. This is an F60A from Hobby King. So this is a 60 amp ESC. I actually did a lot of testing with various ESCs on this motor. Even though this motor looks relatively small, it can do 900 watts. And I'm sure if I went to 6S, it could go even higher. Um, on 2S, it was a lot uh, wimpier. So it needs a pretty beefy ESC. I even tested this motor with my uh, 200 amp ESCs from Crippling Depression, and it still has a little bit to give in it. So um, yeah, very powerful ESC and very powerful motor combo. And this is about the minimum that I can do. I am definitely running at about 55 amps at startup. Um, everything else here is pretty straightforward. Um, I have uh, threaded inserts or the heat set inserts everywhere. You see there's no inserts here. These are actually on the bottom side. So these little um, screws go through the whole length of everything. So when I screw down, it actually is clamping down these front motors and then this block over here. So let's talk about the drive system a little bit. Um, here I've got the gearboxes and I've got the motors. Um, they're a little bit wobbly right now because they don't have the top plate. The top plate just mates the uh, radius right there and there and that just basically compresses the whole thing down. So it's pretty simple mounting. The motors can't go this way and they also can't go this way. They're kind of held in place just by friction. So these are 22 millimeter planetaries from Servo City. And then these are um, SK32118 little tiny um, brushless outrunner motors. And um, they fit really nicely in this little section right there. Um, I might zoom in closer a little bit later. And then we can also see I've got belt drive and this is actually hollow inside here. So the belt goes inside there 
and up to the front. I've got uh, brass bushings pressed inside here and inside here, and this wheel is just freewheeling. It is both a live shaft, and I don't have the set screw in here, so I've got kind of two places to rotate around. Um, so these wheels can have a little bit of slip in them, but when the motors are powered, they actually have a good amount of grip on them. So that is how the drive system works. And um, let me undo this bolt and I'll just kind of give you another idea of how this is made. So these two pieces up front are actually separate pieces of the chassis. And so one bolt holds them in place. So if I take that out, this can kind of lift up. And then this piece comes out. So this is a completely separate piece. And the reason I did this is because if this was all one piece, I'd have to have a hole on the outside to shove the shaft through, and then I'd have no way to access a set screw. So you really kind of need a separate way to have this shaft and have this um, wheel exposed. And then you can see the two brass inserts down there. And then all I need to do is pop that back in and then we're good to go. So these kind of, you know, they won't need to be changed out very often, hopefully never, um, but it's just one of those things that during the assembly, there's no way to assemble this without having these pieces come out. And I didn't want to integrate these onto the top of the lid for the same kind of reason. So basically the one hole sandwiches through all three pieces and the other hole is just hidden underneath. So that's kind of how the drive system works. So I've moved in a little bit closer to show more glorious detail. Um, let's move on to this center pillar right here. So this center pillar was kind of the first design that I came up with um, for this. And you can see I've got three bearings, uh, one, two, three bearings. And these screws go through this plate. So this is a titanium stabilizer plate. It um, kind of keeps these from squinching in. If this wasn't here, I'm relying 100% on the nylon X chassis for stability. So this kind of helps add some stability in the middle. They go through here, through the bearings, and then they're actually connected underneath and tapped into this. Um, this piece, which I'll take out here in a second, um, comes up a little bit and has a good amount of meat on it. So that's kind of what holds the whole weapon into the center of the frame. Um, let's see, what else? Um, we got the power switch over here just kind of embedded inside. Um, you can see that a little bit better. So that is actually screwed in this way. There's a lot of weird geometry in here. And um, I'm using these connectors. These are the little um, Wego connectors that I like in prototyping. Just because there is no good way for me to combine all of these wires and also have it serviceable. Um, the problem is, is that you have the left side and the right side and everything's kind of verging into the middle. It was just a real pain to wire everything. And I like doing this for a new robot because it's easy to service. All of these things can be unplugged and replugged easily. Um, this thing tends to break itself very quickly and um, very spectacularly just because of how powerful it is. So being able to unplug everything is a must, at least for a first generation of this design. Um, let's move on to the rest of the electronics. Um, back here you can see the radio. Um, so the radio is actually tucked in this little space all the way in the back. And you might be able to see that I've got wire channels that run through these pillars. These pillars are hollow. It runs through the pillar, through there, along the sides. So these little um, bridges here are hollow. So the signal wire can go out to the outside. Um, this is where I have the drive ESCs tucked right there and there. These are Afro Race spec. They're 20 amp and these are reprogrammed with Simon K. Uh, this is reprogrammed with Simon K as well. And some of the parameters are changed. And then here I have two graphene batteries. These are 2S 950 milliamp hour batteries. And I've got two of them wired in um, series to make 4S. And it might be hard to see, but on one of these, you have the positive goes down to the switch, connects to the negative on the other one, and then the positive and negatives feed out. So that's how I have the series. The switch is actually doing the series wiring. So that is the inside. Um, let's see, I think the next thing to do is to take off the center section and show you the rest of the motor mounting.
So now I've got the motor freed and a um, little note on the motor. I actually took off the whole bottom section of this and retapped all of these holes. These are 440 now. They were like an M2 or something like that previously. And um, this one is not battle hardened. I have another one sitting around here somewhere. Here it is. So this is the one that is battle hardened. So this is all coated in epoxy and this should be a little bit more durable. I'm gonna try one of each this time. I only have two of these motors because um, I just couldn't find any more of them. So I only have two. So I'm gonna start with the unbattle hardened and then move over to this one. We'll see how that goes. And these should just lift off. Cool. And then from the bottom, this plate just kind of pops out. So let's see if I can do it from the top. There we go. And here is the bottom plate. So the whole idea of this is everything just kind of sandwiches together. So this sits inside like that. The motor sits inside like there. The top of this goes in, then this goes in. So if I go kind of sideways with it, I guess it's like that, like that and then like that. So that's kind of the stack. And then the shoulder bolt boop, 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 goes through the whole thing and collapses that all together. And then hopefully these bearings on the side, um, they sit right outside the can of the motor. Hopefully that will keep it from going around in that direction. We will see. I don't really have high hopes for this because this is a lot of power to fit into such a small package. Um, I think I have the other chassis fully printed. This is the new final one. So um, I think this is all I want to show for now. So let me just show you kind of the clean chassis without anything in it. So here is a fresh chassis straight off the build plate. And I'm already a little bit concerned about the warping. Um, this back section is up a little bit and I'm starting to see it curl. Um, it's still cooling. It literally just came off the printer just a few minutes ago. Um, the problem with this nylon X material is that it does tend to warp a little bit. So unfortunately, I don't know if I can show that. Um, you can see it's coming up a little bit on this back side. So I'm not really sure if there's a good way to stop that from happening. I already tried the skirt. This is already kind of mashed down into the bed as much as I can. It's just such a big piece here. Um, this is, I don't know, eight inches, something like that, 10 inches. It's a relatively large size. So I'm not really sure how I can fix that. But other than that, the print turned out beautifully. I don't really see um, any issues. It looks really good. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna, transfer this over later after this has cooled, but I just wanted to kind of give you an idea what the um, chassis looks like on its own. I can point out a couple little things. Um, there's supports inside here. This is where the wires actually come through for the motor. We've got supports in here for the bridge, supports down there. Nylon X does not like to be printed um, without supports. It will have a hard time. Um, so other than that, yeah, it looks pretty good other than that little bit of warping in the back, which is what I am concerned about. So it's had a little bit of time to cool, but here is the chassis now that it's all um, removed from the build plate and all the support structure has been removed. And you might be able to see this on camera. Here's kind of the residue from the glue. You can see it was curling up a little bit there, a little bit there, just all around the corners. It's really not too bad. It's pretty flat. If I lay it flat this way, um, there's a little bit of a raise right there and there. And the problem is when this weapon is spinning, it spins so fast that if you create any wobble like this, it will just go crazy. It'll go into the chaos mode. So you really, this needs to be as flat as possible. All four wheels need to be flat on the ground. And so that is the problem I've always really had with this design when you're doing a crazy overhead bar. Um, so let's see if everything fits. Yep, so that looks good. So now that aluminum plate is pressed in, the wires kind of go through this little notch. And so that is good. So yeah, everything looks good with this. Um, I think that's pretty much all I wanted to do for the overview video is just kind of give you an overview of the design. Let me make sure this looks good. 
and then I'm going to spend the next couple hours putting this together and um, hopefully creating a final version that is ready for the competition next weekend. So here is the final anxiety attack. As you can see, I've done a little bit of painting and etching on the wedge. Um, for those of you that follow my Facebook page, you might have seen pictures of this. I spray painted the entirety of the wedge and then etched it off with my laser. And you can just see I've repeated my um, logo throughout the wedge. I think it turns out pretty cool. And this is the final robot that tomorrow in the morning I am getting on a plane with and bringing to the competition. So this is the final form. I really don't have high hopes for this. I'm still getting a little bit of wobble. You might be able to hear in the background. I'm actually printing out another chassis right now. I've had some issues with this warping on the build plate. I think I've fixed that, but literally this print is going to end about one hour before I get on the, or before I'm supposed to leave for the plane. So I have no extra time. Whatever it prints, I'm just gonna have to rip it off the build plate and bring it, so we will see. I'm expecting I'm going to get two or three fights max out of this. I don't think it's going to do all that well. Um, the weapon blade has a lot of play in it. Um, you can kind of see it from the back side. It just flexes this whole inside area. On the next version, I want to use that weapon ring and actually brace it against the side somehow because right now it's only being held in from the very bottom. So I want to make a couple little changes, but you know, like everything, you kind of got to build it and test it before you know what you need to do. But other than that, the weapon is great. This thing is going to hit like an absolute tank. Um, this is probably one of the highest kinetic energy beetles out there right now. So if it gets up to speed and if it does hit something, something is going to break. So I'm really looking forward to that. So um, yeah, we'll see how this performs in the recap video. Wish me luck.